Each of those things we just saw has something in common. In each case, work is being done against a force, against a spring, against gravity, against magnets. And in each case, the work being done against that force is such that uh, the, the, whatever work we do is being stored in those forces, in that resisting force. And then that force can be re-released later. In the case of gravity, things can fall. In the case of magnets, they can be repelled. In the case of the dart gun, they can be launched. Okay? So when uh, work done is stored in a force, we say that we give that object, the object that we've done work on, we give it potential energy, which means that it has the potential to do work later on. An object hanging here is not actually doing any work. It doesn't have energy, it doesn't have kinetic energy, but if we drop it, the gravity acting on it gives it the ability to do work later on. Looking at gravitational potential energy, we can figure out how much energy is uh, stored in gravity by determining how much work is done to, uh, to get an object into that position. So if we have a one kilogram mass, we know that to lift that mass up, we have to counter gravity. Now the force of gravity is the gravitational field strength, 9.8 newtons per kilogram times the mass, which in this case is one. So we know that the weight, the downward pull of gravity on this is 9.8 newtons. So in order to lift this up, I need to apply an upward force of 9.8 newtons. Now work, as we know, is force times distance. And so if I'm applying a 9.8 newton force over a one meter distance, then I'm doing 9.8 joules of work in order to lift that mass to that one meter height. Because I'm working against gravity, the gravity can do exactly the same amount of work to pull it down, because the force of gravity on this, again, 9.8 newtons, and gravity is going to pull it down one meter, so gravity can do 9.8 joules of work to bring that down. So with gravitational potential energy, if I put 9.8 joules of energy in, I can get 9.8 joules of energy back out. Now, that can be at a later time. I don't have to drop it right away. I can let it sit there for a long period of time before letting it drop. From this, we get our formula for potential energy, which is simply the mass of the object times the gravitational field strength times the height of the object or MGH. One of the things to think about when talking about potential energy in this way is that there's no absolute reference point, there's no uh, sea level upon which everything is, uh, is compared for potential energy. So when we talk about height, usually what we're talking about is how far is it going to fall. So if I lift an object up, say, uh, 50 centimeters from the table, uh, that can fall 50 centimeters. So uh, um, the gravitational potential energy would be 4.9 joules from here to the table. But if I just bring that over a little bit, now suddenly it's over the floor. So it's going to have an extra 75 centimeters to fall. So we're, we're increasing its potential energy, not by lifting it higher, but by holding it over uh, a distance so it can fall farther. So when we're talking about height, it's relative height. It's how far, how far can it drop? What's it going to drop to? Likewise, if I lift something up off the floor and I give it uh, a certain amount of work up off the floor and then bring it over the table, suddenly I've reduced its potential energy because it can't fall all the way down to the floor anymore. It can only fall down to the table. So it's, it's the relative height between where it is and where it can fall to. So really what we're looking at is kind of a, a, a difference in potential energy between some point and some other point. There is a way of looking at it uh, with, a, with an absolute reference of potential energy, and that's assuming that far, far away from the surface of the Earth, where the gravitational field is practically zero, is 
uh, zero potential energy, and everything closer to the Earth is negative. But we'll get into that uh, in next year's course. So right at the moment, we're looking at gravitational potential energy near the surface of the Earth. And when we're talking about within this uh, gravitational field strength of 9.8, really what we're doing is we're looking at uh, potential energy difference between its starting point and its ending point. So let's use this information to do some problem solving. Okay, so let's start with, um, with our one kilogram mass. Let's say our one kilogram mass is lifted over a distance of 1.5 meters. Uh, how much potential energy did it gain? How much potential energy did we give it? So again, our formula for potential energy is MGH. So we have our one kilogram mass times 9.8 meters per kilogram. So uh, 9.8, so 1 times 9.8, times the height, which is 1.5. What does that give us? Okay, how about another question? Uh, you know the construction sites where they have those pile drivers where they're pounding piers into the ground? Say we have a, a one ton, so 1,000 kilogram pile driver, and it's dropped over a distance of five meters. Okay, so 1,000 kilograms dropping five meters. How much energy is released? How much potential energy uh, becomes uh, energy in the pile driver in order to impact that pole? Once again, the energy released, potential energy is mgh. So the amount of energy is the mass, 1,000 kilograms, times 9.8, gravitational field strength, times the five meter drop. Okay, let's mix it up a little. Let's say that uh, you do 150 joules of work to lift a seven kilogram mass. How high have you lifted it? So here we have energy is equal to mgh. We're trying to isolate H, we're trying to find how high we've lifted it. So we need to isolate H, so we need to divide the energy times mg, uh, divide the energy by mg, sorry, um, in order to get that height. So energy was 150 joules, we're dividing by a 7 kilogram mass, and uh, the 9.8 newtons per kilogram, that will give us our height. One last thing to note before we move on to the next topic is that these forces we've looked at, springs and gravity and magnets and so on, are special because we can store potential energy, energy in them. That doesn't work with all forces. For example, with friction, we can't slide an object across the table and then let go and have it zoom back. So there is no energy stored in friction. And yet, when we lift an object off the ground, we can let it fall, and that shows that we can store potential energy in gravity. Likewise, we can store the potential energy in a spring. So these forces that allow us to store potential energy, we call conservative forces, because the amount of work that's being done against them is conserved, it's stored as potential energy in those forces. Whereas things like friction and, uh, and propulsion forces and thrust and so on are, are called non-conservative forces because we can't store potential energy in them.